Are you looking for a set-top streaming box that has Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos support and won't break the bank? Well, then you're in the right place. Hello, I am Wanderer001, and this is my review of the Roku Ultra. This is not to be confused with the Roku Ultra LT, which is a Walmart exclusive Roku streaming player that is missing Dolby Vision, USB support, and a few other things. It'll be cheaper than this, but you have to ask yourself, are the things that I'm going to cover here worth paying less for, or is it worth paying a little more to get a lot more? I have an affinity for Roku devices, uh, as can be attested by that playlist in the corner there. Roku has come a long way from just being a dedicated Netflix streamer. This is a powerful box with lots of different options depending on your flavor. This particular form factor, the, the flat box, which is where they got their start, this is the only model aside from that Walmart exclusive that you have. So the Roku Ultra is where it's at if you need this particular form factor and don't want a stick or a soundbar or something Something like that. This is what you got. What we're looking at is a device that is matte plastic all around, so no shiny at all, which I do appreciate. But we're gonna take a quick walk around. The front here, you have a singular LED light, which I will admit, as compared to some of the Roku's that I've had in the past, they have definitely dimmed this down, so it's not as bright as I've said previously for other Roku players. Coming along to the right-hand side, there is a plus sign which on older players would have been a plus and minus to make a volume control. However, what this is, is a remote finder. So I'll show you what that actually sounds like in the UI portion of this video. If you've ever misplaced your Roku remote, and let's be honest, who hasn't, this is a way that you'll be able to actually find your remote instead of digging your couch apart or running after small children to see if they stole it. Coming around to the back, this is one of the major improvement areas of the Roku Ultra compared to the Premiere Plus and even compared to the Roku Ultra LT Walmart exclusive model. Here you have a USB 3 port on the back. You have an HDMI port, which I will admit Roku also includes a premium HDMI cable that's about five feet long in the box with this, which is great. You also have your ethernet port. Sadly, Roku does not supply you with this, so you will do that on your own, but it is nice that, that this actually has the ability to have a wired connection to your network. It does also support Wi-Fi AC, which is great, so you're gonna get those faster speeds, and does support both the 2.4 and the five gigahertz spectrum. So lots of options for connectivity. And last but not least, we have our power port right here. Roku does state that while streaming a 4K video, you will use a maximum of 4.5 watts of power. Sadly, I do not have a 4K TV yet, keep telling myself I need to get one, but I have tested it out and gotten about 3.3 watts of usage while streaming a 1080 Netflix movie. Either way, those power numbers are ridiculously low for what you're getting from this box. Coming along to the side, Roku has kept their fabric tag branding. I do appreciate it. It kind of adds a little flair and quirkiness to their brand so that you don't just see a black box sitting on your desktop. Coming over to the underside, this has changed drastically in that it has a smaller rubberized footprint without having the little nubs to raise it off of your furniture. I will say that I was concerned because they, the Rokus do tend to get a little warm because the heat sink is built into the device to dissipate heat away from the actual mechanical portions. And this being directly sitting on my TV stand, I wasn't sure how I felt about that, but I will say that even at hours of 1080, Netflix streaming, it gets a little warm, but not warm enough that it'll damage whatever surface you have it on. So that is something to keep in mind. You don't have to worry about where you put this. If you do, you could always stick a little hot plate under it if you're really concerned about that. You're not gonna have any issues and the little nubbies don't bother me not having them. There is, if we come in, a reset button right there. So if you ever need to reset your device, whether that's because you lost your remote and need to pair a new remote, again, over there in the corner, I have ways of doing that. If you need to, here's your Hail Mary button on the bottom of the, uh, of the device. Because the streaming box itself is only one portion of what you get when you get a Roku device. Roku has also become well known for their Roku remotes and what they can do. 
The Roku remote that comes with the Roku Ultra is kind of their standard fare now, although they have made some great improvements with the remote itself, and we'll go over those as we're talking about it. You will notice at the top here, this is a power button, which will allow you to power on your TV set when you pair it to your actual TV. There is an IR blaster right there, just in case you were wondering how that worked. That little dot right there is actually a microphone so that you can speak to your Roku using the Roku remote. You have your standard back and home button, as well as a D-pad with the OK button moved to the center as they have on previous models. One of the things that I do appreciate about the D-pad now is how clicky it feels. It's still a rubberized click, but it doesn't feel as spongy as a press as a lot of their older Roku remotes have felt. So it's those little details that show you that they are progressing as a company as they're creating new devices and new remotes. You have your rewind button, your talking or microphone button, which for the most part you have to hold down in order to actuate. You have your options button, depending on what menu you're on. You have your, your rewind, play pause, fast forward, and then here, one and two. These buttons are new, and we'll talk about them in one second, because down here, as you have standard on all other Roku remotes, are dedicated buttons for particular streaming services. And it's whoever pays to be here. So if you're not a Sling user, you cannot change this to be anything other than Sling. Hopefully, their clientele are paying a premium enough that you will not end up with a Roku remote like I have in the past with a service that no longer exists and can't be changed out. However, that brings us up to button one and two. You may ask yourself, what are these buttons for? Well, these buttons are so that you can program your own quick hotkey buttons to one and two. Well, what do I mean by that? Let me show you exactly what I'm talking about for the buttons one and two here. Once you program it, you can simply press and it will launch the channel that you've selected. Now, if you need to set up one of yours, simply pressing on it will give you instructions of to store last voice command, press and hold until you hear a successful tone. So you have to use a voice command and then press and hold the button. In this case, what I'm going to do, Discovery Plus. and it's launching Discovery Plus in the background there, and there it's brought me to my selection screen. I then come over and press and hold my number two. You hear a little audio cue of beep, and if I press home again, and this time select number two, it will launch Discovery Plus. If you ever need to change one of the numbers on your remote, simply repeat that action of Use voice command to launch a channel and then hold the number for four seconds until you hear a beep. So that is a nifty little trick that Roku came up with to give you some customization of their Roku remote. If we come over to the right hand side, well, you've got a volume control, so volume up and volume down, as well as a mute button. You do not know how much you need a mute button until you use a remote that does not have a mute button. I am very happy that Roku has this. Coming across to the other side, you will notice a dedicated 3.5 millimeter port on the side here. Well, this is for the included earbuds, but you can use any earbuds that have a 3.5 millimeter jack to listen to private listening mode. So if you're listening to your Roku device late at night, you don't have to have your TV on, you can hear your audio through the remote control. Granted, that will eat through your batteries a lot faster. At the bottom, as usual, Roku has kept their Roku Fabric Tag Flare. Again, I do appreciate that. My cats do not find this as entertaining as the older lanyards that they had on the Roku remotes. But since most of the Roku remotes don't have motion controls anymore, you don't really have to worry about flinging it across at your TV set as if it was a Wii remote. Coming across to the back, as you see, it is matte plastic all the way around, no shiny bits at all, which is greatly appreciated because those are fingerprint magnets, and the rougher texture that you get from a matte plastic means that you have a little better grip. You can see I was kind of holding that for a while there, and it was a little slippy, but not slippery enough to drop it. Here we have a speaker. Yes, this has a speaker, and that is because if you depress that button on the Roku itself to find your Roku, this is where you would hear the audio from when you press that button. You have a nice channel here that your finger just kind of naturally rests in, which I do like. One thing that I did notice with this remote is compared to some of the other ones, 
it actually has gotten a little fatter, and that's because of all the things that they're packing into this remote now. So it's neither a plus or a minus, but if you've had some of their Roku sticks, which have gone down to AAA batteries, and this Roku takes AA batteries, you'll notice that it feels a little heavier in the hand. Also down here, not every remote that Roku makes has a pairing button, but the one for the Roku Ultra does have a pairing button right there, which you hold down during the setup process. And then here you have your pairing light indicator. And then that's it, and it just slides back into place. Thusly, if you need to open it, push down where the triangles are and move back as you push down. And we'll flip it over because that has been the look at the Roku remote that comes with the Roku Ultra. Another thing to consider when you're looking for a streaming device is actually the user interface for that particular streaming device. And that's because that can make or break a high spec system like this if it is a pain in the butt to use. So let's actually use this as a segue to take a look at the user interface for the Roku Ultra. I will admit this next part is rather long, so look down in the description area or along the timeline for timestamps so you can skip ahead if you're already familiar with the user interface for Roku. Because the beauty of these things are, if you are familiar with the Roku interface on another device, it will be very similar to what you get for this device. So if you don't need that part, feel free to skip ahead. This will be the user interface walkthrough for the Roku Ultra. If you've had any Roku devices before, you'll know that the user interface is fairly similar, but if this is your first time having a Roku device, I'll walk you through what you're looking at. I'm gonna start off by saying the background that you're seeing right now is a seasonal background, which is an option that you can turn on or off from the settings menu, which we'll cover a little later. When you first log in, you come to your home page, and what that home page is, is you see all the icons over to the right. Each of these is a unique channel that lives on your home page. When you come over, you'll also notice all the way over here to the right, there's a rotating ad that you see. Roku is an ad supported device and you're just gonna have to learn to live with a giant ad. For the most part, you can ignore them because you're going right into what you want to stream anyway. When we come back over, to our individual channels, you'll notice in the upper right hand corner of the grid, you will see a number out of 29. That indicates that I have 29 different channels. Netflix is my first, Pluto is my second, and Disney Plus is my third. If for whatever reason I wanted to move or do something with a channel, you'll notice in the upper upper right hand corner, it says options. What you'll do is you'll press the asterisk key or star key on your Roku remote. This will allow you to give feedback on the app, check the app for updates, remove that particular channel, move channel, or rate that channel. Moving, if we select this, will allow us to place this particular channel in a different place in your grid. As you're adding channels to your Roku, you might want to reorder them in most usefulness. In my case, most of the things that I want are in the order of the amount of time that I use it. Once you have it in place, simply click the OK button on your Roku remote and that will lock it in. You'll notice that there is a white outline around whatever channel I am actively going to select. And again, in the upper, upper right hand corner, you'll notice the time of day. Coming back over to our home section, we can reach that by selecting the back button on the Roku remote or the home button on the Roku remote. Moving on, we have featured free. And coming over here, this is just going to give you a bunch of different free things that you can watch. Notice that as I'm panning through these, area or channel that it's coming from is changing. So these are not all just from the Roku channel, but it's going to give you a smattering of different things that you can do. So if you're looking for just free things to watch, this is a great place to start if you don't have access to Netflix, Hulu, things of that nature. Roku definitely has moved away from being a Netflix streaming box and is now really a streaming platform unto itself. And the box is merely how you access those things. You'll notice you can get free trials of things here, uh, live TV. We're gonna select back on the Roku remote again, and we're gonna come down to my feed. And this is one of the things that I really like about Roku is if there's a particular thing, show that you wanna follow, you can Add it to your feed and I'll show you how to do that a little later. So yes, Game of Thrones ha hasn't had any new episodes for a long, long time, but if I select that, what it will do is it will tell me where I can actually watch Game of Thrones. Whether it's 
a subscription that is required or if I can buy or rent individual episodes. It will let you know. It also shows if it was in HD or not. That's the my feed area. And it's, again, something that I really like that Roku does quite well. Coming down, we have Movie Store. Well, I don't particularly care for the Movie Store or the TV Store, but they're there by default and can, re can be removed later. The Movie Store, as you can see, is powered by Vudu, and you have options for featured films, featured rentals. So coming through here, it will let you know, hey, here's Free Guy. It's $19.99, it's got 80% on Rotten Tomato, 94% on Popcorn Network, and gives you a little smattering. If we select it, it will say watch the trailer or purchase, 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 purchase. So again, if you're familiar with Vudu, it is a rental service. You can do that for movies, just like you can do that for TV shows, but this is just kind of a Vudu top picks and things like that. You can explore as you like. But again, remember, Voodoo is going to be to pay or rent. So if you're looking for free stuff, this is not where you would come. Same thing with TV. If we're looking for individual TV shows, well, here we go. Bob's Burgers has season 12. It's on Fox. Down there at the bottom, it is $34.99. And we're not going to show you much more that's on here because it's just like the other one. Seasonal sales, bundles, wish list. You get the idea. Moving on to search. What this will allow you to do is search for people, movies, TV shows. As you can see, I have been searching for Travel Man. And selecting that will bring up the show. In this case, it's broken down in individual seasons and lets you know where you can find it. So if I come up to this one here, season six, you can get it on Plex, DistroTV, Prime, BET Plus, BT plus now if we were to come back and search for a person and I'm going to cheat and use the voice remote for this Mark Hamill you'll notice that it's bringing up things that star Mark Hamill coming back so this one I actually typed out because you could see here we have Mark Hamill the actor a little bit of information about him on the right selecting that will let you follow the person. So if you have a particular show, this is how you would do that as well. But it also shows you all the things that they've been in, movies, TV shows. It, it's quite the array of information that you can have on a individual actor. However, you have to type it in as opposed to using the voice command like I did before. Now, if we come in here and we clear out my search, you will see that Mark Hamill is over on the side. So you could see I searched for a person, I searched for a TV show, I searched for a movie, really bad movie, but funny, and then went and did a feed for that particular show. If we wanted to, we can clear our search history, and then you kind of get like this rotating ad of what's popular. Just know that this allows you to search for people, movies, and TV shows. We're going to select back and come down to streaming channels. Well, this is how you're gonna get all of that interesting stuff onto your Roku device. So featured is just that. It's going to show you featured channels. Not all of them are free. And if they have a little white check mark in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll know that that is a channel that you already have. On the right-hand side, you can see information on that channel. So how many stars it has out of X amount of rating ratings, as well as information about it. In this case, you need to have a subscription fee. Coming down to Sling, gives you information about that. Same with Discovery Plus or Tubi, which is a free service. If you select a channel, you can go to the channel if you don't have it. That would be install if you don't have it on your Roku. You can remove channel, view screenshots of the channel, give it your own rating, and then give Roku feedback on that particular channel. We're gonna go back because that's featured. You have new and updated, Again, check marks in the corner means you have them. Recommended, based on your viewing habits and so forth. Top free movies and TV. So these are going to be things that you don't have to pay for. And then you could search for a channel if you don't see it coming up in one of those areas. You can break things down into genres. So movies, kids, classics, all that. They even have all the way down here, games. Not going to recommend the games on the Roku. I'm just going to flat out say it. You can get better games on your smartphones at this point. Coming back, we're coming down to 
my offer. So this is going to be unique offers to you. In this case, if you notice, here's the Roku Ultra, normally $100, currently $69.99. That's a pretty good deal. But you'll notice it's targeting me because I have a Roku 3. So it wants me to say, upgrade my Roku 3. Well, I have upgraded it, but it's still on my account. So they're trying to get buy a new device and upgrade. Also have option for upgrading my remote again because of the Roku 3. This one is because of the Roku 2 XS, which is the very first Roku device I ever got. They're saying, hey, we'll give you $10 off the Roku Express. If you are new to Roku, your offers area might not be that plentiful as mine is. However, Roku does do targeted reductions in their stuff fairly often, so you can generally pick up a good deal if you pay attention. Now we're coming over to the left again, and we're coming down to settings, because this is the crux of how your Roku operates. All the things that you need to change are found here. Coming over to the right, we have networking, about, check the connection, which if we select check the connection, it will go bing bing. Are you connected? In my case, I have a wired connection, and it's just making sure that yes, I still that I still have a connection. Setting up a connection, you could choose wired or wireless with this particular Roku device. And then if you wanted, you can have bandwidth saver, which I have on. So if you have this on and you haven't touched your remote in four hours, you'll see a message that pops up and say, hey, are you still watching? If you don't say anything, it will turn things off, which is nice. A lot of the channels actually offer something like this, but it's nice at the device level. Remote and devices, well, here we go. We have remote. I have the enhanced remote that came with the device. It is currently in use. You could come over and select about, which will let you know battery power, all this other fun stuff. Find my remote. If I press find my remote, it will play a sound on the remote so that you can find it. Don't worry, that's not just a setting from the settings menu, there is a physical button on the Roku itself that you can press. Change remote finder sound, well, you've got a lot of different options that you can come through. So you pick whatever works for you. And then you could preview remote finder and then set up remote for TV control. If you didn't do that during the setup process, this is how you can come and set up your remote control to control your TV set. Turn it on and off, turn up and down the volume and mute. Very useful thing to have. We're gonna come all the way back. You can set up a new device from here. So if you picked up a new remote and haven't lost your current remote, or you can utilize the Roku app to get to this screen or you could pair a Bluetooth device to your Roku. And that has been our remote and devices. Themes, this is currently what you're looking at. Right now, I have a seasonal theme, but we have theme packs, which I have selected a lot of different themes that you can have, which will replace the background and icon sounds and screensaver, which is kind of cool. You can have just the wallpaper, meaning the background that you're currently looking at, which will not replace the screensaver, or we have screensavers. Now, a lot of these that you see here are part of theme packs that have downloaded as part of that, but you can have individual screensavers, like this is just a screensaver, and this is just a screensaver. The issue that I have with the screensavers is that if we come in and let's do this, and we'll say preview, as this rolls through, on every one of them, you're gonna notice right there coming up, they have an ad. And that's because Roku is an ad supported platform now. If you press the OK button or the play pause button on your remote, it will add the channel that you're looking at. You need to press the back button or the home button on your Roku remote in order to not have it go and add that channel to your Roku. One thing is, if you have the kids theme or the kids screensaver, there are no ads. So if you don't mind having a kid's background or you have kids, choosing this will not show any ads. So that is definitely food for thought when selecting either a theme or a background. And I'm going to select back 
and back one more time because that was our screen savers. We also have sounds. You'll see right now you can have different sounds that work with your packs. So hypothetically, here is the Western sounds. You can set, remove sound, give a rating, or give a rating to them. These are active when you select your theme because it overrides the click, click, click sound as it's going through your Roku menus. Additional settings, you can have seasonal, which again is what we're looking at right now. You can turn that on and off if you don't want to have seasonal. You have screen screensaver wait time. I have it at five minutes. You can have it as low as one minute and up to 30 minutes. And then restore default theme. So if you really miss the purple theme of Roku when you first get it and don't recall how to get it back, well, this is how you can get that back. We're gonna select back and move on to display type, selecting over on our remote. Well, here we have auto detect, which is how I generally do this. 4K Dolby Vision TV, 4K HDR TV, 4K TV, 1080 and 720. You've got lots of choices. Generally, if you don't know what kind of TV you have, just do auto detect and you'll be perfectly fine. Accessibility, there's a lot of options in here and I'm not gonna go in in depth in all of them, but you have capture mode on and off. You have on and on replay. You'll notice over on the right hand side, it's giving you an idea of what your captions will look like. Look like. You have captions preferred language. I have it in English. You have Espanol. You've got lots of choices there. Coming down, caption style, text style. And then again, on the right, it gives you that preview. Text edge effect, again, will give you that preview. Text size, preview. I think you get the idea. If this is something that you're interested in, just know you have lots of options and a lot of customization to make it look how you like for your particular viewing habits. Audio guide. This will be honest, I, I turned it off, but it's audio prompts, home button press, Netflix selected. If you don't need that, just turn it off. Beach rate, very fast, fast, normal. So that's for that audio guide. Here you have volume. This is any of the badoop badoops that you hear on the Roku device. I have it set at medium. Shortcuts. Do you need it or don't you need it? So if you don't need the audio guide and you accidentally hit your options key or the star key on your device four times, it will automatically turn it on. So if you don't use it, I would suggest selecting disable. And then we're going to come back. That's our accessibility. Here's our audio menu volume off. So when I'm channel surfing on the left hand menu, if you don't want any sounds, you turn it off here. Audio preference language, again, English, and then HDMI. I have it set for auto detect, but you have the option of pass through PCMI stereo, Dolby Digital, Dolby, and you can go all the way up to Dolby Digital plus DTS. If you have no idea what you're doing, leave it on auto. Selecting back, we're going to select our home screen. So remember those things I told you about on the side that you can get rid of if you don't like them? Well, here's the featured free. You can get rid of that. Movies and TV, you can get rid of that. If you don't like the offers there, you can hide them. I like them because uh, I'm always interested in what they might be trying to prompt me to purchase at a cheaper price of how that cleans up your side menu there. It shrinks things down quite a bit. Below that, you have payment method because yes, you have to create an account. Yes, you have to add a credit card to it. Apple AirPlay and HomeKit settings. Well, if you have Apple AirPlay and HomeKit, I do not. This is where you'd mess with your settings. Legal notice, as you might imagine, privacy policy, terms of service, and account terms and condition. If you want to read through that, that's where you would go. Privacy, well, here we go. Advertising. Do you want Roku to track your movements? Because they are, because they're an advertising platform. Do you want to limit the ad tracking? Well, you come here and you turn it on. I highly recommend that you do this if you don't want personalized ads on your Roku experience. Reset advertiser ID. Well, if you didn't turn this on first, then you're going to come in here and you're going to reset your advertiser ID, meaning any information that it had on you, it's going to blank out. And then you're going to get more of a bundled uh, advertising approach. Coming down to microphone. Well, here we go. Channels that use the microphone on your Roku remote. You have the option of have them prompt you to use the microphone on your remote always allow or never allow. I leave it on prompt because I want to know it's asking for it and I want to determine for myself if I will allow it or not. Same thing with channel permissions. If you did any changes beforehand and you just want to reset everything, this is where you would come to do that. We're going to go back and back one more time. 
here we have our help menu. So Roku has been very good about updating their help. In fact, they created an entire channel that pre-launches with your Roku when you first turn it on. So if you ever need help or tips and tricks, as it says there, just load up your Roku tips and tricks channel and you'll be able to walk through most of the questions that you may or may not have. And then last but not least here, we have system. We have about our system, which will tell you information, the email account, all that fun stuff. Coming down, we have time. You can select your time zone and you can select your clock format. We're gonna select back. USB media, well, if you plug something into the Roku and it has media that the Roku can play, do you want it to auto launch or auto start? In my case, I left it on prompt. And then you have launch channel. Well, there you go. It's going to launch the Roku media player. Control other devices. Well, here we go. Do you want to tell your TV to automatically switch the active source? I just leave that on because it's easier. Overall language, you do this as part of the setup of the Roku device. I have it on English. There's lots of other options there. Screen mirroring, if you wanted to screen mirror whatever you have on your tablet or cell phone, this is, this is where you would set that up. In my case, again, I leave it on prompt. And then screen mirroring device right now, I have no devices. But if I wanted to, and I was actively trying to screen mirror, I would be able to see them listed there. System update, your system automatically checks for an update if power is lost or at specific times a day. If you don't want to wait, you simply click here and the OK button and it will check for an update. And selecting over will give you the build information for your system. System restart, well, if you can get to here and things frozen up, simply click system restart and it will restart your Roku device. Guest mode, entering guest mode is kind of nice if you don't want somebody to have access to all of your channel logins, Putting into guest mode will allow somebody else to come in and log into their services on your Roku device. This is generally good if you have like an Airbnb. I've seen that in a lot of places, but that's how you would do that. Advanced system settings, factory reset. This is the nuclear option. If you need to system wipe, this is how you would do it. You will have to come over here and put in the key, the four digit number that you see listed in order to do a full factory reset. Network connection reset, well, if your device is not connecting over Wi-Fi or over your LAN, this is how you can reset it. And then here you have device connect. I have it enabled. If you don't want it to do a device connect, you simply turn that off. And then control by mobile app. So if you have a mobile app on your phone, the Roku mobile app, network access is default, meaning if it's on the same network, it'll access it. You can permissive, meaning it'll always allow, or you can disable completely. If you use the Roku app at all, I recommend leaving this on. And then advanced display settings, auto adjust display refresh rate. So you can turn that on or off. What this will do is change the refresh rate of your screen based on where the source video is coming from. If you've got something that supports 4K at 120 Hertz versus 1080 at 90 Hertz. And we'll select back. Third-party licenses, just like it sounds, this is where you'll find all of your third-party licenses. And that would bring us back to about, which is the last thing on our side menu here for the Roku Ultra. It is partially due to that user interface that Roku continues to be a streaming set-top box that I come back to. Even though they have moved into slightly being an ad platform, they're not intrusive enough that I think that it's not worth recommending the Roku. As I said, I keep coming back to it. It is the box that I keep recommending for my friends and family who are trying to get into streaming or cord cutting. I will admit also that the setup process has changed drastically for the Roku. In fact, they've taken in some of the things that I've said in the past where you can actually sign into some of your streaming services directly through your Roku account and you don't have to manage those accounts in several locations. You log into your Roku account and you can log into all of those services. So I do appreciate that they've streamlined the process as well as present user information for those who may not have ever had a Roku in the past. Now, if all of this sounds good, I'm sure the next question you have is, well, how much does the Roku Ultra cost? Well, depending on where or when you purchase the Roku Ultra, you're looking to spend a maximum of $100, and if you're lucky, you can get it on sale for about $70 with all that it can do. Is it worth that price? Well, that's something you have to ask yourself. In my case, even without having a, a 4K TV, this was a drastic upgrade from the premium Premiere Plus that I had, and I'm happy that I did it. And all those extra features that I get with the remote, as well as the future upgrade 
to that 4K TV, which will happen eventually, I know that I will be very well situated with the Roku Ultra, because I tend to hold on to these for quite some time. But only you will know for sure if this is the right streaming box for you. If you didn't get the idea, I highly recommend checking out the Roku Ultra if you're looking for a Roku that supports Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos sound. With that being said, I have been Wanderer001. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the area below. And as always, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, consider giving it a like as that will help other people find the video as well. If you like what I'm doing here, you can always help fuel the next review by buying me a coffee, link in the description below. Last but not least, if you want to be notified when I upload a new video, you know what to do.